Hello everyone! Welcome to the Mayday Paintings channel. My name is Blake, and today's painting comes from a photo of the death mask of Charles Pretty Boy Floyd that I found on the FBI's Instagram account. I'll be using acrylic paint today. Let's get started. I only used a few synthetic brushes for this painting. Three smaller rounds and a long flat and a palette knife for mixing paint on the palette. Here are the colors I used. They look nice all lined up here. And here's how they were arranged on the palette. I made a mixture of raw umber and yellow ochre to start because I predicted I'd need a lot of that. And the mud mix is leftover scraps of paint from the palette, just put into a pile. Since this is a low pressure painting, I decided to just go at it with the paint instead of doing a pencil drawing first. So when I do that, I usually pick a light or medium color to start with and then start darkening areas like I am with the shadows under the eyes and the nose. So I am continuing just putting the darks in. I like to kind of get a overall feel of the painting down first and then start worrying about detail and uh, rendering forms. So after I kind of get a base color down um, of this yellow, something to work on top of, and kind of got a color kind of close to what the background is going to be, I let that dry so that the paper flattens back out because when you put a bunch of water on it, it's going to kind of swell up and give you kind of like a convex uh, surface to work on, which isn't super great. So I just let it dry and now I'm trying to look at the values and get stuff a little closer. I was inspired by this picture I saw on the FBI Instagram account of Pretty Boy Floyd. I don't know a whole lot about him other than he was a bank robber like in Great Depression era, like early 30s. I looked at his Wikipedia and I think he only lived to be like 34 before he was shot by the FBI. Um, so he was not that much older than me when he died. So one challenge I kind of continually have in painting this and trying to record it is the little bit of distortion I get because in the first uh, couple painting sessions or a couple hours I was painting this, I was really trying to line the camera up well with the surface of the painting. So I'm kind of painting off to the side so that the camera is pointing more straight at the painting. Um, and then here in a little bit, uh, maybe here, I realized that the mouth was kind of off to one side because of how I was looking at it. So that's just kind of an extra challenge when you're trying to record something <laughs> and stay out of the way of the camera. Uh, it can kind of mess up your view. That's another reason why I have my painting surface almost straight up and down. It's at a slight angle because I want the paper or panel or whatever I'm painting on to be about parallel with my face. That way I don't get any angles that distort the picture and I can be as accurate as possible. Usually you're fighting your you know, own abilities and challenges that just come with painting something realistic. You don't need the added, added challenge of fighting the different angles of a surface, like if you were going to lay it flat on the table when you're painting. So I'm working on making things uh, more opaque, 
trying to figure out where all the values and the colors go, um, figure out warm and cool with the yellow. Um, on the nose, that's where I'm using that cadmium yellow in those really light areas because when you're using such a warm color like this yellowy uh, brownish golden color, if you put just pure like titanium white, it's going to look really cool and it's actually going to have not quite the highlight or bright effect that you want because the white is so cool. So I'm mixing in a little bit of that cadmium yellow into my white for even the bright highlight areas so they really stand out. And then where it's really that opaque white, um, I'll use the pure white kind of in the middle of the light yellow, which you'll see a lot of that later. Uh, right now I'm putting in just the nice background black so that I get a real sense of how the value relationships are going to be. With acrylic paint, sometimes you have to go over things a few times to get the opacity you want. You can see when I fix the top of the head, I kind of let it dry and then go back over it to get it to cover up the black of the background. The tricky thing with Floyd's left eye is it kind of has this crease in the middle of the eyelid. So that was kind of tough to get um, to make it look natural and not like too dark of a weird crease in the middle of his eye. So I've gotten all the kind of major areas blocked in and what I'm trying to do now is figure out where the more dull shadow colors go and where the more saturated mid-tone colors go. Um, your mid colors are going to have like the highest chroma or like the you know, the most saturated colors because you know shadow is darker uh, you see less color the light is going to be more washed out and your midtones are going to be richer pure color i'm also just kind of moving around intuitively i kind of paint on something until i get tired of it or maybe it needs to dry and then I come back to it later. Here I'm trying to figure out this weird eye fold that's on his eyelid. Also making sure I push all those shadows as dark as they need to be to define the rest of the detail. That's one of the strengths of acrylic paint is uh, when you work in oil sometimes if you get a lot of paint on it's hard to keep your darks as dark as they need to be um, with acrylics you can always pretty easily put them back in whereas oil you might have to scrape them out i'm also starting to flirt with putting in those light areas and highlights so i'm just trying to establish the overall kind of organization of values and how that really light paint is going to affect everything else. I'm also uh, trying to build up those areas I know are going to be a highlight because like I've said before with acrylics you usually need a lot of layers of light paint to get a really opaque white for a highlight or a really light area if you're painting on top of uh, a middle color or darker color. So again uh, trying to push those darks, lay in the shadow, um, switch into bigger brush to try to make those big moves and get the big areas in. Sometimes if you have a little brush in your hand it uh, kind of creates more problems because you're trying to blend with the little brush but if you switch to the big brush you can take care of things more quickly and it's easier for figuring stuff out like that top lip um, i could have painted that with a smaller brush but it probably wouldn't have come together as quickly as it did 
So that's a good tip if you're struggling with the painting and the detail and maybe getting the shading and forms and the gradient sort of areas uh, correct, switch to a bigger brush. A lot of times it'll help you get things back in shape. Another challenge I had since I was using a zoom lens for these shots was remembering where the camera was and making sure I was painting in the camera. I think there was a couple minutes of footage where I was aiming the camera at the middle of the face, but I was working on the forehead. So you can't see what I'm doing. So you can see I'm just kind of pulling out lights and pushing darks and trying to look at smaller and smaller uh, shapes and areas to put in. Then starting to put in those, those shiny areas to give me an idea of how everything's going to work with each other putting that cadmium yellow into the white so that it is warm enough. Just kind of placing those highlights in there and then blending them in. And then switching to the bigger brush again to lay in the dark area. Trying to establish those shadows on the left side. So I am trying to put in big areas of color and value and then worry about the edges and go back and blend them in. Most of the time I try to put off putting those really light areas in as long as I can just so I give myself time to really build up uh, what's under them so the mid-tones and the dark areas and then when I think I've got it kind of where I want it then I put in the light areas and blend them in a lot of times I'm wrong and have to rework the mid-tones and dark areas anyway but the light values really inform what I have to work on. So I'm looking closely at where I can, you know, describe the light going over the surface. The uh, surface of this is pretty interesting because, you know, it looks like a face, but it's actually clay. So it's a really shiny surface, so it's going to have a lot more highlights and shine than a actual face would. The nice thing about using the carbon black is it's pretty opaque, so if you need to refine your edge, you usually only have to do it once. The flip side to that is it's a really strong color, so you don't need very much of it to uh, ruin a lighter value, so proceed with caution. These light values are also really fun to drop in and then blend in. What you want to be aware of when you're trying to put in those really opaque light values, just make sure you have a lot of paint on the brush and not too much water because then it's going to just thin the paint too much and it'll kind of run and not give you the effect of light and opacity that you want. For lighter values, I'll often use fresh paint or make sure I'm pulling out of the top of the mixture of the little puddle of paint just so I make sure I don't have very much water in the paint.
sometimes if you you know just put a big mark down like I just did or the dark in the middle tone it gives you something to react to so even if you do it wrong it you know gives you something to mess with and try to fix one thing I remember from painting classes is if you are having trouble figuring out how dark or light to make something uh, mix up something you think is definitely too dark or definitely too light and put that down um, and a lot of times it'll be just right or if it's too dark you can always bring it back but then you've seen the difference you know how far is too far and then you can pull it back to the right value so what I'm trying to do now is really establish the light on the right and on the right and top of the forms and the dark on the bottom and left of the forms so trying to group the light and dark values together and then get those nice golden transitions in the mid-tones. So in the, the cheeks and those transition areas, that's where I'm going to have kind of the richest, most pure yellow ochre color. Especially on the left side, that there's more of a like stark contrast between where the light stops on the cheekbone and the shadow starts. So I'm really trying to push where that shadow is and then uh, put that kind of reflection on the left side. Every so often, I have to clean up the palette to give myself a nice clean area to mix on. So what I'm doing is just scraping all that paint in the middle that I've made little mixtures with to that mud pile. And then I'll put out some fresh paint. That big raw umber and yellow ochre mixture that I started with, I used all that up so I'm making a fresh one here um, you can see I saved some of the darker mixture and put it between the black and the raw umber and mix some more yellow ochre in to get my light medium mixture and then putting out some fresh white and tighten buff So here I've turned the painting on its side to get a better view and to get a better angle for my brush strokes. And on the computer I've also rotated my reference picture. So my goal now is to try to solidify the forms and the transitions from light to dark and kind of finalize everything that makes it look three-dimensional so then I can start focusing on the fine details. I'm also going to try to really lay in the light values on the top of the head so that there's a good amount of contrast and it starts to look kind of shiny and that it has a strong light hitting it. So I'm trying to get really thick and opaque with the areas that the light is directly hitting where you can see that texture that like the glaze of the ceramic um, really reflects the light and spreads it out. This was a really uh, fun texture to paint because of the, the rich color and then also the reflectiveness. So those spots on the head kind of just popped up because the camera shut off. The camera I'm using shuts off after about 12 minutes. 
I looked it up. It's some law about if it records video for longer than 12 minutes, then they have to market it as a video camera and that messes up like the taxes on it in some states or something. I'm looking into getting a newer camera with video autofocus. So I don't know if newer cameras still do that. But this old Canon T3i still an issue I have to be aware of. So I think the footage looks good. I just have to make sure it's still recording the footage so I don't get those jumps. So back to painting talk. Uh, I'm trying to really lay in the dark areas so that when I get to some of these highlights, the highlights are really going to pop and give it that three-dimensional look. I'm not sure what these little marks are. They're probably imperfections in the mold or the, yeah, the mold they took of his face. I don't know if they'd be actual like indentations on his skin. They could be, but they look like probably air bubbles when they made the cast of his face. So when you're doing those bright white highlights too, um, if you put kind of a cooler color next to them, it makes them pop more. So as the color is coming out of the middle tone, it'll warm up and be really saturated in the, the middle tone, the mid color. And then as it approaches the highlight, it kind of cools off. So I have like the cooler yellow so that when you put the white, or in this case, probably a little bit of white with a little dab of cadmium yellow in it. Um, it'll give like a subtle contrast that'll make that highlight pop off more. All these little highlights are just pretty fun to do. Just kind of lay them in and then blend them in a little bit. And then if you've done your job right with the dark areas like the creases and under the nose and in between the lips and stuff like that, uh, those highlights will really sink when you put them down because then you have that full range of values from as dark as you can go in the shadows and as light as you can go in the highlights. And then that really stark black background helps too because it kind of sets everything off and it kind of gives you instant contrast. But then you also want that really dark black or really dark values kind of throughout the painting. I can nostrils and creases and stuff. This left cheek was tricky. I think I had to paint it a few times to get it to where I wanted it to go. Just with the kind of stark drop off for the shadow, but in the shadow there's still some rich golden color and then what I'm painting now is kind of those folds in the face coming out of the eye and then there's some real subtle reflected light that sets it apart from the background Took a few tries to get those kind of wrinkly shapes on the eye too, but 
eventually I got it somewhere I could be happy with it. The chin was a little tricky too, kind of the same deal where it has like this little dark spot in the middle where the cleft is and then it, you know, goes back out and lightens up on either side of it. Areas like that, just kind of transition areas, those are areas that I usually will take a few swings at before I settle in with them. Then the fun part is if you've done the kind of blending and fading right, when you lay those highlights on, it really makes everything come together. But you'll notice at this stage I'm trying to use a pretty opaque paint. I'm not doing a lot of like thin layers or anything. I'm trying to lay thick paint down and work it in and put more paint to, to blend into each other. Overall, um, I know it's not a exact replica of the picture, and I kind of figured this out by the end of the painting. Um, like maybe the forehead's a little too long, chin might be a little too long, mouth might not be wide enough. You know, there's definitely some things I could change if I wanted it to look exactly like the picture. But when I got to this point, or towards the end, I was pretty happy with what I had, even if it wasn't, you know, a perfect likeness. And since this was just kind of a, a painting itch I got where I just wanted to try painting this picture just because it, it was cool, not necessarily because I wanted to perfect likeness of uh, Pretty Boy Floyd. I didn't feel the need to really change it because it was more of an exercise of just kind of painting something cool and studying the, the different reflective surface of the, the ceramic cast. I was really happy with the three-dimensional look I was able to achieve with the good blending of the forms and the contrast created between the really bright highlights and the black background and all the good dark shadowy areas. It's important to know when to call it quits on a painting so that you don't uh, get tired of it and maybe end up with something you don't like. If I had like reworked the facial features to be more like the picture, I probably would have just grown weary of it and I probably wouldn't have been as happy with it when I was done because I just would have been over it. So I think I met my goal with the painting and ended up with something I was satisfied with. So here's some tape peeling footage for you. I had had problems with the paper before where the tape really ripped uh, the top layer of the paper away. But I had this idea to put acrylic paint around the edge of the paper before the tape, and it worked pretty well for this painting, although it did tear some. On paintings I've made since this one, I put more layers of white acrylic paint before the tape, and it worked more better. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or would like to suggest something to see me paint, leave it in the comments below. 
Remember to like and subscribe and to follow me on Instagram. See you next time.